in the previous video we have studied definition and normal value of gfr and filtration fraction then the structure of filtration membrane we have also studied that gfr is determined by filtration coefficient and pressure gradient across the glomerular membrane and any factor that alters these determinants lead to changes in gfr if you have missed this first part link is provided in the description box below today we shall study how gfr is regulated that is how gfr is maintained at normal level and how it is measured this is pratima and you are watching planet physiology okay let's start with the regulation of glomerular filtration rate gfr is regulated by three mechanisms namely autoregulation neural mechanism and hormonal mechanism let us start with autoregulation autoregulation of gfr is the most important mechanism by which gfr is maintained it is defined as maintenance of constant gfr in spite of wide variations in mean arterial pressure mean pressure may vary between 80 and 180 mm of mercury but gfr is maintained at its normal value of 125 ml per minute this is achieved by two processes myogenic mechanism and tubulo glomerular feedback mechanism Myogenic mechanism is due to property of vascular smooth muscles to show reflex contraction in response to stretch. Let us understand this with the help of diagram. Let's assume that this is the afferent arteriole with some initial diameter. Increase in blood pressure causes vascular smooth muscles to stretch and leads to increase in diameter and hence the blood flow. this stretch on the smooth muscles initiate their reflex contraction as represented by these white arrows the vessel has contracted back to its original diameter this leads to return of blood flow to original value thus by regulating renal blood flow gfr is maintained constant in spite of variations in systemic blood pressure the second mechanism of auto regulation of gfr is tubulo glomerular feedback as the name suggests sensor for this feedback is renal tubule and effector organ is glomerulus so this feedback operates at the level of jg apparatus where sensor is macula densa macula densa cells possess one sodium one potassium two chloride co-transporters in their apical membranes which allow them to detect changes in the nacl concentration in the filtrate that reaches the distal tubule macula densa initiates signals that act on afferent and efferent arterioles to modulate filtration by the glomerular capillaries thus tubulo glomerular feedback maintains filtrate load delivered to the distal tubules by regulating gfr let us study this mechanism in detail whenever blood pressure increases it leads to increase in gfr now the filtrate passes rapidly through the proximal tubule and loop of henle hence the filtrate that reaches the macula densa contains greater quantities of nacl as a result more amount of sodium chloride enters macula densa through sodium potassium chloride co-transporters the same is represented over here this is the lumen containing filtrate these are the macula densa cells this is one sodium one potassium two chloride co-transporter in the apical membrane so the excess of nacl enter the macula densa through these co-transporters and increases intracellular sodium concentration this in turn stimulates activity of sodium potassium pump and hence causes more and more hydrolysis of atp atps are ultimately converted to adenosine and adenosine production increases 
This adenosine diffuses out from the basolateral surface of the macula densa and acts on A1 receptors in autocrine manner to release calcium ions. Calcium ions act on smooth muscles of afferent arterioles leading to their constriction and hence reduction in glomerular blood flow and hence the GFR. The mechanism which I have told here is as described in Genong's review of medical physiology 23rd edition. But there are some other views also regarding production of adenosine and its action to produce vasoconstriction of afferent arterioles. Stimulation of macula densa also decreases renin secretion from JG cells and most probably this mechanism acts through nitric oxide. As a result of decrease in renin secretion, production of angiotensin 2 decreases. Lack of angiotensin 2 causes efferent arteriolar dilatation. This reduces hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries and hence the GFR. Increase in GFR also increases oncotic pressure of the blood in the efferent arterioles because more and more plasma is getting filtered so proteins in the blood get concentrated so colloidal osmotic pressure increases. As this blood containing high oncotic pressure reaches the peritubular capillaries this promotes absorption of water as well as solute from the renal tubules. This mechanism is known as glomerulotubular balance. It maintains constant proportion of solute reabsorption and hence their delivery to the distal tubules. In contrast, whenever there is decrease in arterial blood pressure, it decreases GFR. As a result, concentration of sodium reaching to macula densa also decreases. Macula densa initiates signals which increases renin secretion by JG cells and hence raises angiotensin II formation. Angiotensin II predominantly acts on efferent arterioles causing them to contract and hence increases resistance to the outflow of the blood. Macula densa also initiates signals that cause afferent arteriolar dilatation and hence increase in the glomerular blood flow. Both these mechanisms bring glomerular hydrostatic pressure back to normal and hence GFR back to normal. Now coming to the neural regulation of GFR, it is mainly due to sympathetic innervation to the kidneys. Sympathetic fibers primarily innervate afferent and efferent arterioles, proximal and distal tubules and JG cells. Thick ascending limb of Lupofenle also has sympathetic innervation. Very strong and acute sympathetic stimulation as occurs during exercise and severe hemorrhage causes strong vasoconstriction, predominantly that of afferent arterioles. This leads to reduction in GFR by about 10 to 30 percent and urine output falls to zero. But this effect is temporary and lasts for about 20 to 30 minutes. After this particular time, GFR returns back to normal due to autoregulatory and hormonal mechanisms. This plays important role in preventing accumulation of metabolic waste products in blood. Now let us study the role of various hormones in regulation of GFR. Circulating epinephrine and norepinephrine as well as adenosine secreted from macula densa cause afferent arteriolar constriction and hence decrease GFR. Endothelin is secreted from endothelial cells of renal blood vessels mesangial cells and distal convoluted tubule. It also causes constriction of afferent arterioles but also the efferent arterioles leading to decrease in GFR. Angiotensin II as we have studied in the previous slides predominantly causes efferent arteriolar constriction and raises glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. This in turn increases GFR. Actually, angiotensin II is formed in response to hypovolemia or decrease in blood pressure and basically it prevents fall in GFR during these conditions and maintains excretion of metabolic waste products. Now let us study some hormones which increase GFR. First is nitric oxide. It is produced from macula densa. It causes afferent as well as efferent arteriolar dilatation and increases GFR. 
locally produced prostaglandins cause relaxation of mesangial cells and hence increase the surface area available for filtration they also reduce vasoconstrictor effect of angiotensin and help to increase gfr locally produced bradykinin releases nitric oxide and prostaglandin and hence increases gfr dopamine increases renal blood flow induces relaxation of mesangial cells and decreases renin secretion by jg cells and by all these mechanisms it increases gfr all these are the local hormones leading to increase in gfr apart from this circulating atrial natriuretic peptide causes afferent arteriolar dilatation and efferent arterial vasoconstriction leading to increase in gfr now coming to the last part of the topic measurement of gfr GFR is measured by calculating renal clearance of substances which are only filtered and neither reabsorbed nor secreted by the tubules. We shall study details about the renal clearance in a separate video. For the time being, just remember that renal clearance is the volume of plasma which is completely cleared of the substance per unit time. That is the volume of plasma from which a particular substance is excreted in the urine the ideal substance for gfr measurement is inulin because it is freely filtered and not at all processed by the renal tubules hence its clearance is equal to gfr inulin is fructose polymer with molecular weight of 5200 it is non toxic and not metabolized in the body let us study the procedure in brief Initially intravenous loading dose is given and then sustained infusion of inulin is maintained to keep its blood levels constant after equilibrium time accurately timed urine samples are collected and plasma sample is collected midway during the procedure then the concentration of inulin in urine and plasma is measured and its clearance is calculated by using the formula clearance equal to u v divided by p where u is concentration of inulin in urine p is concentration of inulin in plasma and v is urine flow rate the suffix in represents it is inulin the substance used is inulin even though inulin clearance gives accurate results in patients usually creatinine clearance is preferred to measure gfr because creatinine is endogenous substance which is produced during muscle metabolism so there is no need of infusion of any external agent it is also freely filtered but small quantities of creatinine are also secreted by the renal tubules so urine concentration of creatinine is little higher but the measurement technique which detects creatinine in plasma also measures small quantity of other plasma constituents and hence its plasma concentration is also little higher these two errors compensate each other and hence creatinine clearance gives fairly reliable results apart from inulin and creatinine other substances like mannitol sorbitol cobalt labeled vitamin b12 and chromium 51 labeled edta are also used to measure gfr So this is all about regulation and measurement of GFR. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. If you enjoy my presentations, press the like button and share it with your friends. For more such videos, subscribe my channel and click the bell icon. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.